Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. I'm here at the Heise studio at HIC 2019, and joining me right now, I have, oh my God, it's like a health IT icon, luminary. Somebody referred to him as a national treasure here in Australia. I know you're laughing. <laughs> this is Graham Grieve. He is the founder, the, the father of FHIR, F-H-I-R, the known common standard for data exchange and healthcare information technology. Graham. Nice to be here. Thanks, <laughs> And that's enough, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> And good. that's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's so good to talk to you. I feel like I've had to, I've endured so many conversations about fire. It's nice to finally meet the person responsible. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. You <laughs> had to endure conversations about No, fire. they've been fascinating. You're, yeah, you're truly changing the world with this. That's what we're trying to do, yeah. Yeah. So I want to start out this interview. So I saw um, Graham spoke earlier today at HISA, um, at the HIC conference here. And I want to read back to you something that you said, which I thought was just so prolific. I mean, you talked about the story of of how you founded this, and I want to get into that in a second. Okay. Before I do, I'm going to read this back to you. So you, this is what you said. It was so beautifully articulated. What you said was that fire the standards were not the solution. The solution is building communities. The real value of fire is in the value of the community we built around it. Yeah, I love absolutely. that. Talk Thank more you. about that. And you, you had said too, it's like the fire icon is the perfect icon for that community because of their passion. Yeah. So. You know, a standard is a great thing, a te technical standard, and those standards tilt people to operate in different ways. But what really matters is that people think that it matters. Um, any number of technical standards are written and go nowhere. It's people who make things happen. Groups of people who believe and share a common goal who make other people take notice. And, and it's our community that is such diverse and sprawling and passionate community that um, want to make change happen. And you know, it's kind of funny, when we started with the fire icon, it was just because it was, you know, a tricky word that no one else is using and that's kind of cool and the internet thing. And But the flame has come to represent to us the, the passion that we have. I love it. It's a, it's a burn to fix um, you know, that was my story was about is where that came from for me. Yeah, and go into that for a second because, I mean, I have to tell you, I, I teared up. I mean, I did, not, I did not think that this set of very technical standards came from such an emotional place. And I think you even described, you know, it was like you'd stop thinking about healthcare in, in like a cer certain terms and you started actually like feeling healthcare like emotionally. So talk a little bit about your story about where this came from. So what I said was... I was intellectually engaged in health. That's it. Right, I was working in the lab, I was doing clinical research, I was a software vendor writing solutions. It's a great challenge. But then, then so I said, you know, Kath and I, my wife, we're gonna have kids. And, and that was a really traumatic process. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was really, you know, miscarriages, stillbirths. Um, my wife spent six months in hospital. Oh God. That, that, was, that was really a big, and it hurt me. It hurt her much more than me, but it hurt me. And 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 I, I actually spent ten years in a spiritual wilderness after that happened. Before I really came out and said, "Okay, I mean, we, I've got a job, and I got a family, and I got a daughter, and the, my daughter's a treasure. Two of them now, they're treasures." But but it was ten years before I really recovered from that process. I'm sure. And in that time. And I had I had no issues with our clinical care. Our clinical care was great, but but it still hurt us. And then in that time that followed, that as we're going through the healing, the long healing process, still going on, um, so many people shared their stories with us, and there was this consistent theme in their stories that the yeah we know the healthcare system is fragmented. That's the system we know, but those fragments represent little gaps that turn into massive chasms that people fall into. And they're coming to me and telling me how their life is so terrible, so sad. Like, it's a private thing that they only opened up. But then you look, you're thinking about going, you fell into this gap. It's a disgrace, you know, and they like, can't overcome it. They didn't even realise that it shouldn't have happened. And, and like, I'm not going to, I don't want to share that with them. But it just, the more I heard it, the more I'm like, no, this is, it's just not okay. It's not good. And then you do a, like a root cause analysis. Where did all this come from? Where? Why does it happen? And and there's heaps of reasons, right? There's, there's legal and there's financial and there's culture and there's it's a it's complexity. But but 
One of the reasons is that it's really hard to share information, to get the right information in the right place at the right time in a, in a timely, delivered in the context. Right. And, like, I can do something about that, mm. right? And I'm like, I just sat down with my wife and I'm like, what is it that I'm trying to do? And I've just got the fire back and I'm feeling good. And, and I just said, I'm going to commit. I'm going to solve that problem. I, no, I, I might not solve it, but I'm going to try. And if I, if I, I want to know that I did everything I could. And so I said, well, here's an idea that we could pursue. And, and people jumped on board. But it was really the fact that people followed and that we said, OK, we are going to do this together. And that's just that grow, that community. And it grew and grew and grew and turned into this monster that's consumed my life. <laughs> and, and I'm just so happy and so amazingly honoured that thousands of people have come and joined and said, we see the connection between the purely technical um, details that you're working on and the outcomes that it leads to and so many people in the team have a similar emotional reason for me you know really? deep you know we passionately believe that we need to do better in healthcare and that we can make a difference and and none of it's not an intellectual game right it's we have we have children or we have parents or we have partners Right, and all of us are, are patients. Everyone is a patient. So my feeling is not unusual. I think the only unusual thing is that Louise asked me to talk about it. <laughs> right? So oh, yeah, just just that and, you know, the fact that you invented a solution to right. this. Well, no, but <laughs> I just put the idea out and said, come and join me. Like, it, it's really important. I'm okay on the fire guy. I get all the credit. But thousands of people created what I'm getting credit for. I, I didn't, yeah. I didn't do this, right? Well, maybe, I mean, do you think that part of it was that the industry was waiting for somebody to come along and just say, hey, let's do this? Yeah, well, I mean, the idea had time and come, right? Actually, if you stand back and say, okay, fire, really it's just like the web from a formal standards organisation, how are we going to use the web in healthcare? That's not really like a mind-blowing idea, is it? <laughs> right? I just stood up and said, at the right time I stood up and said, I'm committing to doing this, come and join me. Right? It's, it's, I talked about it this morning, right? I'm the, it was I, you, you're the committedist. Yes, I'm the committedist. I love that. <laughs> I, I don't even know that I am. I can aspire to be, right? This is pretty other committed people. Right. Right? But, but it's not about being the cleverest or the richest or the... It's about saying, I'm going to do this. Come and join me. And I, all these other people came who were just as committed as, as I am. <laughs> right? I and and uh, it's funny, actually. I was listening to people afterwards trying to say, committed, committed, Commit, committed. committed this. This. <laughs> and I'm like, it never occurred to me to be hard to say it. I just got it out. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, I'm not special in the team. Well, I mean... I don't know. Everybody, I think, needs... You know, it, it helps to have a good leader, right? It helps to have somebody who can rally the troops and who has an emotional connection and is is, pr is even just somebody who's able to say, I may not be all of these things, but I am willing to be the committedest that I can be. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes that's, that's a you know, lead by example. Well, yeah, and it's critical to cultivate the team and encourage everyone and say it's your work. That's yeah. why I keep hammering away on this. It's not mine. It's not because there's some sort of artificial, you know, yeah. fantasy thing. It matters to the rest everybody. of the people no, and the number of people I've talked to about fire who 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 lay that term out there like it is a it is a badge of pride, and they really are um, they completely committed to the idea of it, what it represents, and into like rolling it out into whatever solution they've got or whatever hospital system they're in. It's been it's remarkable. Right. So, how do you think things are going as you're watching this community grow and expand? I mean, what do you what do you think about where things are today? You know, I've always thought of it like. I threw a rock into a pond, <laughs> right? And then in the middle there's this big bang that turns to be little and little and little, and there's these ripples going out. Yeah. And, and, and the, at the, where the ripples are, there's this disturbance in the force, as it were. <laughs> and, and out on the edges, people are going, Whoa, what is he doing? Whoa. And, and, and as time has gone by, it's got further and further out as we got further and further reach. But then people, they go, why are you doing this to us? Why are we having... Ch what's wrong with what we have now? And then they look at it and they get learned about it and they go... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and the next thing you know, they're, they're on board and they're like, they become pushing the, pushing the wave further out, yeah. right? And, they, and now they're part of the community. And, and by and large, that's what's happened. And, and, and so 
that's how I see the rings are expanding. Yeah. And so as the rings expand, the, the surface area gets bigger and the number of people you engage gets bigger. And so the, the principal issue we have now is how to scale the community right. and the community process without losing some of the things that have made the community work really well. And, and so more and more of my time is spent you know, engaging with other standards organisations mm -hmm. who, who kind of want in but only on their own terms. And you've got to say, your terms matter to you and even they matter to us, but there's some, you know, things you have to, you have to go with. And so we have this ongoing discussion with lots and lots of organisations yeah. and governments and cultures and, and increasingly that's the kind of discussion I'm having. Um, and, and sometimes I, I wake up I wake up really excited every day because I look what I can do. Yeah. But sometimes I also wake up feeling pretty stretched. Like and, that. And, and we're trying to figure out, you know, we're, we're working really hard, as or HL7 is working really hard to divulge some things away from me so that I can um, have less depth of things to worry about. And so that's an ongoing process. And, and um, But I do want to say, and having got to that, I want to say yes. that I have really generous committed support from the US government fantastic and and that's you know that's how this happens if the US government wasn't generously supporting our work um, and and me to do it um, none of this would be happening and, well, that's fantastic and so it's, it's good to have good partners right yeah just right and so are you frustrated at all with how slow because, I mean, this is one of the things, right? Everybody's like, oh, my God, the pace of change in healthcare is painful. So are you? how do you feel about the pace of how adoption has been going? Has it been going faster than you thought? Are you frustrated with it going maybe too slow? What do you think? It's a funny thing, you know, because on the one hand, um, like I'm in the U.S., in the U.S., I work in Washington, even if I physically live in Melbourne, and, and like everyone there is like, we need change. But how fast can we push it? It's, it's, and on the other hand, you know, here in Australia, it's like, no, no, we're not in any hurry here. It's it's all fine. Whereas in Washington, almost like crisis mode. Right. And it should be crisis mode because the whole digital disruption thing, you've seen what it's done to other industries. Right. What's happening? Do you care about health? I think we do care about yeah. health. We, we want it to go right, right? It's it's urgent to get ahead of that. You can't... And, and so, yeah, health has changed slowly. But it's really clear that we're at inflection point where change is going to accelerate significantly driven by the convergence that's smacked in, in other places so we can't we can't sit back and go yeah well we'll wait and see how we need to get ahead of this and 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 know how our policies are going to change so that so you know like take a nurse right or she, she's got a job, her job is controlled by all sorts of regulations and legislation and liability rules and institutional policies and change is coming towards the way she engages with her patient in the context of the engagement. Right. And she's like, or he is like, I want to do something different, but I can't because I've got all these hard rules around me and but they're not any feasible anymore. So how, we need to be urgently saying, we're about to enter this world where all those things we build become problems. You know, you can't just sit back and go, yeah, I'll be right. Yeah. It's not going to be right. And some of them will be, some of them will be right, some of them will be wrong, some of them will need adjustment, but we need to get on top of that. And that's probably my biggest concern is that across the board, we're not looking at what is coming holistically. Do you think we'll ever fix the interoperability problem in healthcare? Well, there's, there's kind of two answers to that. If When I started getting involved in interoperability, it was a big deal to tell each other, all the systems, to tell each other about where the patient is. Interoperability is just so hard. Now, 20 years later, we take it for granted that that's plug and play. <laughs> but interoperability is so hard because <laughs> we're doing new stuff, right? So it's kind of glass half full, glass half empty. In, in another 10 or 15 years, we'll be taken for granted that we're exchanging patient clinical data, it's, it's everywhere where we need it, and we'll be focusing on getting the planning process correct and, and trying to calculate it and bring AI into the planning process, and we'll be going, interoperability is so hard, <laughs> right? But we'll be like a whole but it'll mountain be... of more than where we are now. And so... Kind of it's whether you look at it from a process point of view or do you look at an account point of view. But the process will always remain the same. The hard thing is to get people to sit down, talk to each other, agree to each other, hold to those agreements and then leverage them. 
Right. Right. So, what's next for you to accomplish with fire? I'm kind of it's an interesting phase because because I'm totally busy with all the relationship management yeah, yeah. and the tools that support the relationships that we build, and that's probably a two year kind of two year thing. Yeah. And then after that, we're kind of going. I don't know where do we go? And um, if anybody who wants to listening wants to tweet me and give me a thing, your opinion, <laughs> go for it. Because because like, should we should we be much more um, focused on um, the drivers of clinical change and you leverage the community into that clinical space? Or should we just go? We we've done our we've done what we set out to do. Time to step back and and uh, watch the, the process unfold? Or should we take on more governance process? Um, we're thinking about you know where our path lies, but, but we know for the next couple of years we're full bore, relationships, community building, franchising the process kind of thing. Got it. Graham, thank you so much. I mean, I have to say this. You you had said that the icon for of fire is perfectly emblematic of that community, but you're not sure if it fits you. I think it does, but not in the way that you think. Never mind like the passion, the burning, the match. I think you're very warm. And I have to say, I'm, it's truly a pleasure to speak with you and hear the story of how this came about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica. I'm Jessica Damasa with WTF Health here at the Heisen Studio at HIC 2019 with Graham Grieve. Thanks so much for joining us.